Hi, I'm Rob, creator of the SliderCam, as I dubbed it, software. Um, I just wanted to make a quick video going over the interface and uh, a few of the the thoughts you have to bear in mind when uh, entering your numbers to set up a time lapse. I think all of this should be explained in the code, comments, and the readme. But for those of you who just want to throw it on an Arduino and go, then uh, I guess this one's for you. And those of you like me who learn more from videos than readme files, which let's be, let's be honest, never get read. So, um, yeah, I've got the Arduino right here on the second screen. So, uh, second screen, second camera. So, uh, let's jump right in. Uh, when first turns on, welcome screen quickly, and then on to distance. Quickly look through what we have. We have distance, we have duration, overall amount of time it's going to take to slide. Number of steps. This isn't the number of motor steps. This is the actual number of stops that it makes in order to take a picture equivalent to the number of frames, total number of frames in your final video file. Uh, direction on the slider and we have go. So distance is in millimeters because metric is better and easier to calculate in. So I've been using 1200 uh, just for convenience, it's a relatively round number, divides more easily than 1300. Um, this really depends on the length of your slider, if you only have a 3 foot or 1 meter slider, then you'll have to adjust these, th this max as appropriate for you. If you create a really long 10 foot slider out of PVC pipe, then you can also adjust that upwards. Uh, there isn't actually any hard limit. You can put it as high as you like, but the motor will just try to pull the the dolly off the end of the track and it will bust up your wheels and probably break your motor, so you should probably heed the the guidelines. On to duration. This is in seconds, as you can see, I've got this helpful hint of 3600 per hour, because, unless you want to do Mendel arithmetic, then uh, you've got to get out the handy calculator that we all have in our pockets these days, and go whatever, however many hours you want, usually about 8. I was doing about 8. Um, times 3600 which gives us the number of hours in seconds to enter. So we'll put in 28, 28, 800. Okay, and that's it, it's simple as that. How long it's going to take to get from one end of the track to the other end of the track. Or from one end of your distance to the other end of your distance, more precisely. Now this is where you start having to think when you start putting your distance, uh, when you start putting your steps in for the third entry. Now I've set a minimal step count of one simply because the software divides by the number of steps on at least one occasion obviously. So um, let's avoid divide by zero errors without actually having to code error catching into uh, into the software. So like I said before this is the number of stops that the slider makes to take a picture. So 
this most likely ultimately depends on your final frame rate. And of course, duration that you want the video to be. I've been doing 720 because that is 30 seconds at 24p. It's a fairly nice round number. Of course, the T3i battery hasn't actually been able to cope with that number of steps and has been dying after about 560. So I guess if I want to do longer time-lapse videos, then I uh, need to invest in a battery grip. But anyway, uh, the number of steps in software is multiplied by the shutter duration. That is a variable in software. It's not the actual shutter duration of the actual camera you're using. Now, in the stock uh, Arduino sketch, I have shutter duration set to two seconds, which means your shutter speeds have to be two seconds or faster if you don't use it as is. It also means that the number of steps multiplied by the shutter duration number or value cannot exceed the total duration. In fact, it's generally better if it doesn't even get close to the total duration because then if it exceeds it, then the time between each motor step becomes negative, which is obviously impossible and the whole thing doesn't work. Or if it gets close, then the the rounding from the math with the ints, integer math in computers, gets kind of silly. And the the final video will probably be a bit jerky because everything won't be spaced out evenly. It'll be kind of back and forth depending on exactly where a various integers fall as it goes along. Um, so, yeah. At 7.20, 2 seconds shutter duration, that's 14.40 seconds, which isn't really close to 28,800, so I'm good here. Uh, if I was going to do a really, really long time-lapse video, then I would probably have to adjust something somewhere. There would have to be some kind of compromise if I wanted the motion at the end to be smooth. Of course, if I was doing a really long video, then the duration itself would probably be also really long like some hyperlapse over 24 hours or something, I don't know. So that's, the ratio is more what you have to be concerned about rather than absolute values. Direction. This is just a software option so that you don't have to reset the camera to exactly the same position every time you're, uh, you're starting a time-lapse just generally easier, or if you're using video with a single step and you're just going back and forth, then that's also generally easier to just do in software. So those four are currently the only controls there are. I certainly want to add shutter duration as another uh, as another option in this UI because I can then add reasonably add um, some kind of error catching method which will throw an error if you try to um, exceed the total duration, basically. And you can adjust the uh, the exact shutter duration on here according to whatever you're using in camera. 
So, uh, yeah, I hope that was informative and explanatory and not rambling and confusing. But, uh, let me know what you think, uh, if you still have any questions or want something clarified, then just, uh, hit up the comments below as usual. And, uh, yeah, that's all there is to it in terms of the actual interface. At least that's all there is to it right now. Okay, third time lucky. Tried earlier, failed for various reasons. Camera didn't have a flippy LCD, so I couldn't see whether I was in focus or not. Okay, so it is... 7.45 p.m. The slider has been doing its thing since 12.30. I set it for nine hours. About 32,000 seconds that ended up being. Um, 720 uh, steps, camera steps, equates to exactly 30 seconds at 24p. That's true 24p, not 23.976, whatever. Um, It's worked perfectly, from what I've seen. The big contraption that it's under, the uh, trestle table, picnic table thing with the screen door on top was designed to protect it from the storm that never came. We've had overly glorious weather all day, I'm not a great fan, being in English. The electronics are buzzing away nicely. I wondered if larger numbers for longer durations might be an issue. Cause some problems with, you know, floats, doubles, ints, whatever. On the math end of things, but uh, nothing that I've seen. Cause I don't have a serial printout from a uh, motion control uh, function, so I can't be sure. But it seems pretty promising to me. I don't know if you can see way there in the back, up under here somewhere. The, uh, the GT2 belt is vibrating every time the motor steps. I think it needs a um, one of the torsion springs on there. I'm not sure why, because I tightened it up reasonably when I put it on. I didn't want to go overboard and over torque the motor, but I don't know. It doesn't seem to be causing any accuracy issues though. Based on what I saw of the very first test, before the first test, when I did along a uh, tape measure. So yeah, that's it. Nine hours, 720 frames, 30 seconds of video at the end. I'm getting eaten alive, so I'm gonna head back inside. Uh, I'll be doing the walkthrough of the actual electronics shortly, but I'll probably be putting it before this bit. So I guess I needed a, a wibbly-wobbly back-in-time thing at the beginning, but never mind. Onwards! Now, um, 
You'll note in the article that I say 12 volt power supply for the motor. And you'll probably also note that the 12 volt power supply is conspicuously missing. That is because it's right here. Problem being, it has to be wired up. That's pointless. Let's do it there. Or even there. I wonder if you can see it under that camera. No, not really. Nope. I'll try. So, this is a $5 generic 12 volt, 2 amp power supply from Amazon. Takes 120 volt mains in and outputs a single rail of 12 volt, 24 watt right there. You can also just about see there's a little yellow dot in there. That's the the uh, voltage regulator, which is a nice touch, I think. But uh, yeah, since that's all metal, I decided to make a little wooden box for it so it doesn't actually have to be picked up by uh, by the metal, even though it's grounded. I went out and got a, uh, or rather my wife went out and got a um, six yard, uh, six foot uh, extension cord, which I just chopped in half and wired straight into there. A three prong one. And then I spent maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe, putting this little box together. It's just glued and tacked. Uh, I added the flippy lid so that the screwdriver can get in to the terminal block. And other than that, there's really nothing special at all. The uh, the power supply comes with little C cutouts in the frame to allow it to be screwed into something. And uh, that's what I did. Didn't take very long. Total cost including the extension cable, about $9, I think. So, once that's working, um, the extra voltage and current over the 9 volt 1 amp power supply for the Arduino that's currently powering the motor uh, should be more speed, more torque, uh, possible video usage as a real-time motion control setup. We'll see about that. I'm not sure whether that will work or not. That is to be determined. So, yes, that's it. I hope, uh, like I said, I hope this was informative and not confusing, but anything you have to say? right underneath. <laughs> Alright then. <laughs>